Hi friends, so in the past sessions we have seen uh, how to write our first scalar valued function and, and table valued functions also. So we've seen how a function can return us a, a, a set of records in the form of a table or, 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 or single value in form of a sing, single scalar valued function. Uh, in this session we are going to write our first stored procedures and, and, and see what is the standard uh, for, for writing a stored procedure. Before uh, we start there are two uh, things that we would need to know that why is it that we write stored procedures uh, and secondly how stored procedures are different from a, a, a function that we have seen. Uh, so stored procedure is, is uh, essentially a set of uh, batch queries uh, which could be uh, a set of manipulations, data manipulations which are to be performed in, in, in a batch and uh, when this, these set of queries uh, need to be used essentially in the form of a, uh, a form of a redundant activities when, the, when this query is, is not just ad hoc uh, you would want to create a pre-compiled set of uh, code which is uh, which is uh, which uh, resides closest to the database that is to the uh, in the form of a stored procedure now and now uh, when you when people uh, do the app side of coding that is uh, that is uh, uh, when people try to create a, a desktop application or, or a website they essentially try to uh, bring out uh, the business logic and keep it mostly uh, closest to the to the database and wherein they we have they have to perform some, some kind of a data manipulation they would want this uh, to be handled by stored procedure and uh, also the reason is uh, they can simply pass parameters uh, for a stored procedure uh, and, and retrieve uh, or return or perform cert certain kind of activities uh, as they intend to. Uh, it not only is, 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 it gives them the scalability, portability uh, because uh, some other applications can also use it and also it is a, a single point change they do not have to dig the code uh, so it is preferably uh, they would prefer writing a stored procedure and, and keep it uh, to uh, in a database uh, there are a couple of other reasons also uh, and uh, the reason I mean how stored procedure is different from a function a function uh, is essentially when when we are trying to retrieve certain uh, records in, in, in that sense a stored procedure can also return you a table uh, and it also ca can return you uh, a set of a single value I mean uh, uh, it can return you a single value so it uh, but the thing that a function cannot perform is, is it cannot perform a DML uh, activity like insert update delete uh, this cannot be performed in a function so uh, you cannot call a stored procedure from within a function uh, so uh, here let's try to st uh, build a stored procedure and see uh, how uh, how stored procedures can be called this is a sample stored procedure so to do so uh, what I have here is a transaction table which uh, uh, is a hypothetical table uh, which uh, keeps uh, the transaction details of the product that is sold and uh, the transaction date the payment type uh, the quantity the uh, sales price of each unit uh, and uh, if you look at the schema of the table uh, you would see uh, the transaction ID is uh, generated uh, in the form of a seed and uh, we have the primary key clustered uh, index on, on the transaction ID and uh, if we look at if we have it I have created a hypothetical table where I have uh, housed all the different payment modes credit card delivery cash and delivery debit card and, and, and net banking so the payment uh, type in this uh, column in this table refers uh, to the payment mode. Now we'll start uh, to build a stored procedure uh, to register a transaction as and when it happens. So to do so So let's start uh, to write a stored procedure. So first what we do is to register a transaction we create uh, a stored procedure uh, which uh, which will have this which will accept this product ID to, to be able to register a transaction these are the six parameters that it will uh, it will need 
प्रोडक्ट आई डी रेफरेंस ऑर्डर आई डी ऑर्डर लाइन आई डी पेमेंट टाइप क्वान्टिटी एंड सेल्स प्राइस एंड लेट्स कंटिन्यू विद दिस स्टोर प्रोसीजर So uh, these are the man. I mean, uh, kind of uh, man that mandatory statements. We'll we'll see the details. Why do we put uh, set no count on NC nulls and quoted identifier as as a best practice? We would we would see that in in, in the next uh, video. But here we'll focus on trying to uh, create or uh, develop a stored procedure. try to validate the quantity first if there is an error in 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 the quantity i'm just trying to show uh, how do we ex exception handle the whole scenario so right so We'll use a try catch, and we will say and we'll raise error. Once this validation is complete, we will start our transaction. We will also validate the mode. You could have simply created a foreign key a reference, and it would have uh, you know taken care of that. But just I'm just trying to show you uh, here. Transaction date. Date. Then we say then then we have
then we commit our transaction and in the catch block we will try for first check for the transaction count this will check for uh, any open transactions for us and if there is an open transaction it will roll back for us for, for us so next i'll just try to show you uh, this is the error which is uh, which might be encountered which may be encountered if there is any failure can also track the procedure as rock and we can catch the severity also as self so let's leave it to here so if you see this is our, our, our procedure which we have coded for for registering a transaction we are accepting six parameters we are validating for uh, the quantity and then we are validating if the payment type is a valid one or not and only and only in the case uh, we have valid payment type we'll go ahead uh, ahead and, and commit our transaction and in the catch block if you see we check for the transaction count and if there is open open transaction and if there is an, any error happening it will it will try to roll it back and also catch off uh, any error which has happened so let's execute this proc okay don't realize what was okay right so we have completed a procedure now let's try to execute this procedure to execute it you say uh, register transaction we call it register tram and uh, and then you give uh, the parameters uh, which is of the order reference id Okay. I let me just remember the order. the reference id let me just call it one zero then payment type uh, let me call it net banking quantity let me call it five and the cost let me call it 250 let's run this procedure Right, so this procedure has executed successfully to see we can see that the product has been 
registered I mean the transaction was successful now let's also try to see how the try catch works for us so in that case let's just try to give a negative quantity and see what is the output so if you can see uh, we have been able to catch hold of uh, the error messages the procedure from where the error uh, occurred the severity the error line number so it gives you all these details so that was a very simple uh, sample stored procedure we'll take it to the next level in the next session where we can see uh, uh, how a stored procedure can be used to even output uh, or generate the uh, output value from this uh, existing proc that we have written Thank you friends.